Bonoka HQ and in today's tutorial we're going to show you how to send over emails or users from your bubble application and send them over to Facebook into a specific custom audience using Zapier. So this is a very um, sp about tutorial for a very special use case but very helpful in, m in many cases if you do online marketing, performance marketing just please keep in mind that you will always have to take a look at your local privacy uh, rules, privacy laws, if these things are allowed, if you need prior um, consent from the user. I can't um, speak for all countries here. We're just going to show you how to make it. Um, and yeah, so first of all, let me explain what the goal of this is and why this is so useful and why many online marketers um, use this or you might want to use this as well. So. Let's, for example, say, um, let's, let's just assume an example where you have a software as a service business built in Bubble, where users um, can test the product for free and they can use, I don't know, they make, can make 10 requests for free. Let's say your product works in a way that users can make requests to something or requests to an API, it doesn't matter. And your user has uh, 10 requests for free. And then after he or she reached 10 requests, um, they have to upgrade. So what might be an interesting use case for a custom audience in Facebook? Well, one example for this use case I just described would be you would maybe want to send over once a user reaches this, these 10 requests and then doesn't upgrade, you want to send this user over to Facebook and put them, him or her in a custom audience so you can then show him or her a personalized ad where you say uh, something like, hey, we saw your the number of requests you made is full now. Um, use this discount code to upgrade. And obviously, the um, conversion rate and the, just the general personalization is much better with this kind of ad than if you show this ad to anyone because this user knows your product already. He or she has tested it to the full um, amount of requests he or she can make. And so you, now you want to show him um, this custom ad. Um, and how are you going to do this? Well, we send over the data from Bubble to this custom audience. Okay, the sending over is done securely by Zapier, so we're not sending it over directly. We're kind of sending it over via Zapier. And there's obviously lots of use cases um, to work with custom audiences. This was just one example. You might find many other use cases if you just search for it online a bit, or you might have your own ideas already. But yeah, so. Um, that's it regarding the introduction and what will you need? So first of all, obviously you will need a bubble application, you will need a Zapier account and you will need um, a Facebook business account, um, which you can create for free. And uh, what you wanna do is you wanna set up everything in Facebook. We're not gonna show you that. What you will have to do is you will have to um, create an ad account, obviously create a Facebook page for your business and so on and so forth. We're assuming here now in this tutorial that you know all of this already and then um, important thing is what you want to do. You want to go to Facebook. You want to go to audiences. Okay. You want to go ahead and create a new custom audience. Um, I think it doesn't matter from what source you created at the beginning, but um, what we would what we uh, recommend is you to create a custom audience from a customer list. Okay. And then you maybe just add one email as the customer um, in this list, and you can add your own email or the admin email, whatever you want to do. So just that you have a ready customer list and you give this uh, custom audience a name. So for example, you name it um, users that have reached max request. Okay. All right. And once you have this done, um, we can go ahead and um, define everything else from our bubble application and from Zapier. So let's take a look at that. So first of all, we're here in our bubble application. All right. And as you see, I have just a blank screen here. Uh, and we're not going to design anything um, in this application. That's not what we're going to need. I just, I'm just going to go ahead to data and I'm going to create some um, yeah, data structure here. So for our users, we want to have a new field, which is going to be called requests. Okay. The field type is number. Okay. And this will count how much requests a user has made. Okay. The default will be zero. And then let's say, for example, all right, there's Again, let's just assume this is the dashboard here. This is the application. So my app, okay, something like this, really simple. Um, and then we have a button here and this button will say make request. All right. 
and then the user, your user uses the service or the product you offer. And then what you, what you want to do, you want to say, all right, I want to make changes to thing. I want to change the current user. I want to make his request to whatever this user's request is plus one. So he made one request. Okay. And then beneath that, we just want to have the, the total displayed here, how many requests he has. So current users requests out of 10. And that's just now for easy demonstration purposes. Okay. So what you want to do next, you want to head over to plugins and you want to go ahead and add a new plugin. And the plugin you will want to add is called Zapier. So just search for that. Um, and there's two Zapier plugins. Um, this one, there's a legacy one and a recently updated one. We're actually going to show you how to do it with the legacy um, um, plugin. It will work with both, but we're going to go with legacy. Also because many bubble users still have this plugin installed. So let's click ahead on install. We have the uh, Zapier plugin uh, installed, really simple. Let's go back to design. And what we want to do, we want to say, all right, we want to go ahead and there's something missing here. We need a backend workflow because we want to track if a user makes 10 requests or has 10 requests. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to settings, API, and we're going to say, all right, we want to enable workflow API and backend workflows. Great. Now we have this new option here called backend workflows. I'm going to click on that and we can create a new backend workflow. And what we're going to do, we're going to use a database trigger. Okay. So a database trigger is basically um, allows you to trigger events based on certain changes in your database. Okay. And as you can see, um, this event type is only available on plans that support triggers. So you will have to update your bubble account. We're going to show you two ways to do this here now. So one with database triggers and one just on the front end, basically both will work again. If you have a upgraded plan, you can use this as well. So how would a database trigger event work? So we will call that, um, full request reached. Okay. For example, request reach doesn't matter what you call it. It will be of type user. And then really simple, we will say, all right, when this is triggered, okay, so whenever this is triggered, then we're going to take a look at that, that in a second. We want to use something. We want to use the plugin action trigger Zapier Zap, and then we want to trigger the Zapier Zap, okay? And now this is asking us, well, yeah, what, what, what do you want to send over to Zapier? And now the actual um, information is required. So how many texts do you want to send over? How many numbers? How many booleans? How many dates? Well, for us, our use case, we can say we only want to send over the email. What is the email? It's a type of text. So we can change everything here to zero. Okay. And we want to change over one over send over one text. And this text will simply be the user's email. It doesn't matter if you use user before change or user now, because that won't change the email in most or in all cases. And we want to send over the number of text that we want to send over is one. And that's it. We're sending over one text to Zapier, which is the user's email. Okay. However, now the question is, when are we sending this over and where are we sending this over? So let's take a look at the when um, part. So we want to say only when, so when do we want to do this? We want to do this only when the users before change number of requests, was lower than 10 and then the user now's requests number is 10. So what does that mean? Really simple. If the user made less than 10 requests before and now something changes and he has exactly 10 requests made, well, then this is triggered. Okay. I think that's quite straightforward. You have to use the users. There's two states, a state before and a state after and kind of this action tr triggers when the state before changes to the, the state after. So kind of like this. Yeah. Now the question is, where are we sending this data to? So let's head over to Zapier now. And what I'm going to go do immediately, I'm going to click on create a Zapier. Okay. And we'll be brought to the Zapier editor. And then we will have a trigger and an action really simple. So the trigger is going to be, um, a webhook. So just search for webhook. It's going to be webhooks by Zapier. And the trigger event is going to be a catch hook. So this will wait for it to be triggered kind of. Okay, let's click continue. We can then copy this hook URL. So copy that and simply paste that here. Okay. All right. And that's basically it. Okay. The second part we're going to take a look at in a second. Okay. 
because we can trigger this because this application is not on a free plan. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this actually here, this um, trigger Zapier Zap action. Let's delete the database trigger and let's actually build this in the front end. Um, so let's say, for example, uh, make changes to user and let's paste that here. Trigger is Zapier Zap and then let's change that to only when current users requests is 10. Okay, same functionality. Again, we're doing this because database triggers won't work now in this unpaid application. It will work if you have a paid application. So let's just change that here now. The text we want to send over is the current user's email. Okay, great. So now let's actually already go ahead and preview this application because what we have to do is we have to send over a test payload to Zapier in order for to, for us to work with the subsequent data. Okay, so we can click on test trigger. Nothing happens because obviously we didn't send everything anything yet to this catch hook, but we're gonna do this now. So uh, I'm not logged in. So let me just go to data um, under user. Um, let's quickly create a new user. Doesn't matter here, just call it info at nokehq.com. Click create. This is now just for demoing purposes. Let's run as this user. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and say make requests. Well, that's one now, make requests, two, make requests, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's head back to Zapier, nothing happened, okay. Eight, nine, and now if we uh, click on make requests, the conditional statement should be triggered and we should send over our data. So make requests, now we have 10. Now let's see if something happened. Great. Work perfectly fine. So because we made our 10th request as defined in our workflow, when the current user's request is 10, we send over this data to Zapier here, our current user's email to this webhook, and Zapier saw it, we, we found a request and just text one, which is info at NoKHQ. And now the rest happens in Zapier. We can, that's it regarding our bubble application. Obviously you could send over more data if you want to do that, but for a custom audience on Facebook, you really just need the email or, or the, and the name you could add as well, but the email is enough, okay? So now you could do a lot of things with this um, email. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna click on continue and we're gonna say, all right, um, we wanna do something. What we wanna do, we wanna, let's search for Facebook. We wanna go ahead and go to Facebook custom audiences. And what we wanna do, we wanna add an email to a custom audience, an existing custom audience, okay? So let's continue. And now what you would have to do is you would have to add your Facebook account. Um, I did that already, add your Facebook account. Then you wanna choose which custom audiences. I'm not gonna select one here now, but you, the custom audience that you have in your Facebook business manager will be displayed here in this dropdown. And then you just have to say, all right, which email do you wanna send over? Well, I wanna send over whatever email I got in the first step, which was the catch hook, which was our text one info at NoKHQ. And this will now be dynamic. So now if, if a new user reaches the maximum limit, um, a new email will be sent over and Zapier will then send it over to our custom audience on Facebook. And to be honest, that's it. Um, you would go ahead and turn on this um, zap, and um, yeah, you would you would have a po you would have a custom audience which will be automatically populated over time, and you um, can then um, run custom ads for this um, custom audience. Um, Obviously, you can add subsequent steps here in Zapier as well. So maybe you want to also send this over to Google Ads. Okay, so you want to go to Google Ads maybe and you want to send over some data there. So you want to maybe create a customer list if you want to do that. That's a bit similar. Um, add a contact to customer list. That's kind of the um, similar functionality to Facebook. So you can kind of have one catch hook where you get the email from Bubble and then you can send over this email to all your custom audiences for all the online marketing platforms you use, where it's Facebook, Google, and what else there is. Um, so yeah, um, that's basically it regarding this tutorial. Um, I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment or reach out to us. Um, and I hope you guys learned something. See you guys for next tutorial with NoCoHQ. Bye.